Hello, and thanks for watching this video on bifibration of polycategories and their relation to classical linear logic. I'm Nicolas Blanco, and this is joint work with Noam Zalbaga. You can find uh, the draft paper for this talk on my uh, website at this URL. And you, I will also post uh, the slide on my website. So before going into the, the details of uh, polycategories, let's first uh, recall some context and especially models of multiplicative linear logic. So to model intrusionistic multiplicative linear logic, we can use monoidal cross category. And for classical multiplicative linear logic, we can use start and most category that were introduced by Barr, or linearly distributive category introduced by Crockett and Silly, where a linearly distributive category with duals is a equivalent to start and most category. And in both cases, the idea is that you will ask for two model structure on your category that will interpret the tensor and the power, and a monoidal duality between those that will uh, interpret the negation. Another way of interpreting um, logic in, uh, in a categorical setting is by uh, using multi-categories. So multi-categories have been introduced by Lambeck. So it's, it's a knowledge by Lambeck uh, to represent sequent calculus, to interpret intuitionistic sequent calculus. So in a multi-category, instead of having morphism that have one input and one output, you have multi-maps where the domain can have many uh, objects. And so using this multi-categories to represent second calculus is inspired on one way, on, on one hand, sorry, by um, the notion of multi-linear map in uh, linear algebra, and on the other hand by uh, the intuitionistic second calculus. And so using this interpretation, we can define the connective by universal property instead of defining them by structure. This can be extended to classical uh, sequent calculus by considering polycategories. So this has been uh, done and introduced by Zabo, which was, um, uh, was uh, one of Lambeck's students. And the idea is that in a polycategory, you have polymap, where now you have, where now both the um, domain and codomain have multiple objects, and the cut the, sorry, the composition is done, is done along one object to mimic the cut rule from second calculus. So this makes it different from pro or props, for example, where you can uh, compose along multiple objects at the same time. So polycategories have been, have been used by Coquette and Silly to model multiplicative linear logic in what they called two tensor polycategory with, with duals. And we can also find uh, in the literature the terminology representable staple category, which is the one that we will use in this talk. And finally, I want to mention another line of work by uh, Claudio Armida. So in the, at the beginning of the, the millennium, Armida observed that there, there are a lot of analogies between multi-category theory on one hand and fiber category theory. So if you go to uh, is a nice paper uh, there. Uh, you will see a, a, table, a table that uh, recap all, uh, all these uh, analogies. And to make this uh, rigorous, he introduced the notion of multi-categorical vibration. And it's more precisely of covariant vibration of multi-categories. So I did that uh, in uh, 2004. And something that is quite interesting is that multi-categories that are fibered over one, over the terminal uh, multi-category, are in correspondence with monoidal categories. So this makes uh, this relation precise between representable multi-category on the one hand and multi-category fibered over one on the other hand. He also used this theory of fibration of multi-categories to study the algebra uh, for an upward, where he he proved that an algebra for an operator is the same thing as a discrete vibration over this operand considered a one object multi-category. After that, uh, people have been interested in introduce contravariant vibration and then bifibration of multi-categories. So it has been used, for example, recently uh, by uh, Likata, Schulman, and Wale to represent some uh, logical structure. 
And this is closely related to uh, the notion of vibration of closed category. Because, so if you take a multi-category that is bifibered over one, then it is the same thing as a monoidal closed category. So if you are just, if your multi-category is covariantly fibered over one, you get just a monoidal category. And to get closeness, you need to also ask for it to be contravariantly fibered over one. And there is an important asymmetry there. That is that the pullback, so for contravariant uh, bifibration, has to be parameterized by a, a choice of input. For the push forward, forward, you don't have to do that because you just have one object in the codomain. But in the domain, you have possibly multiple objects. So you have to choose one along which will perform this uh, pullback. So in our paper, we have several contributions. The first is to define a notion of universal polymap that will be that will be parameterized either by an input or by an output. And using this notion of universal polymap, we can get all the connective of MLL by saying that uh, they are characterized by the existence of certain universal polymap. And so with this analogy in, uh, in mind, we introduce star representable polycategory, which will be polycategory that as all possible universal polymap. And then we prove the, the following theorem, which is our first contribution, that this notion of star representable polycategory is equivalent to the notion of representable star polycategory that has been uh, studied by uh, uh, Coquette, Silly, uh, and, and others to uh, represent uh, multiplicative linear logic. After that, we define the notion of vibration of polycategory that extend the notion of vibration of multi-category. So like in the contravariant case uh, for multi-categories, in vibration of polycategories, the notion of Cartesian uh, polymap will be parameterized by a specific input or a specific output. And we prove that a polycategory is bifibred over one if and only if it's star representable. And so this gives uh, a correspondence between star autonomous category and polycategory bifibred over one. And so one of our first motivations to study that was to study the structure of um, the star autonomous structure and the category of finite dimensional Banner spaces and contractive map. So something that is really uh, interesting about uh, this, this category is that it's a category that comes from the category F uh, of uh, vector spaces. So it has a forgetful functor in it. And it is also star autonomous, but it's not compact close, uh, contrary to uh, the category of finite dimensional vector spaces. And so the two uh, norms that you can put, that you will put on your tensor project, that will give you the tensor and the par, all called projective and injective cross norm. And they are known in uh, the community of functional analysis. Uh, for example, because they have this universal property that they are extremal, on uh, the set of norms that you can put on uh, the tensor project. So if you look at any norm that you can put on the tensor project and that is well behave, behave in some sense, will lies between those two norms. And we will see that this property of being extremal come from the fact that they are defined using uh, Cartesian polymaps. And finally, there is a third contribution that we won't have uh, time to uh, get into the details in this paper, in this talk, sorry. That is polycategorical growth and correspondences. So we give a, a collection of different growth and correspondences in the polycategorical case, where, for example, we give a correspondence, a one-to-one uh, -one -one correspondence between on one end by vibration of polycategories and on the other end, uh, pseudo functors that goes into the two poly category of multivariable adjunction. And so using this fact, we recover an observation by Max Schumann that star autonomous category of Frobenius pseudomonoid in this two poly category. Okay, so now let's uh, get into it and first define uh, poly categories. So our poly categories will be uh, taken to be planar, which means that they are not necessarily symmetric, uh, basically because it's possible to define that. And symmetry doesn't, um, doesn't really play any um, 
picture in this story. So you could take symmetric polycategories and do everything that we are doing here with uh, only slightly mod slight modification. And so we thought it was uh, better to, uh, to do the more general case. And this is in line with um, the work by uh, Colquette and, uh, and Silly where they consider linearly distributive category to be not necessarily symmetric. And so in particular, the notion of star autonomous category that we'll have uh, is also non-symmetric, so it's planar star autonomous uh, category. And in, uh, in particular for duals, we'll have both right and left duals. So that being said, a polycategory is a structure analogous to a category. It has a collection of objects, except that it has a set of polymap from any finite list of objects to any finite list of objects. So the domain and the codomain are finite lists of objects. This list can be empty. It should have identities, the notion of composition that are unital, associative, and that, has, uh, that, that have an internal change law that we'll explain uh, later. So the fact that uh, our polycategories are planar and not necessarily symmetric uh, puts some restriction on the composition, but I will explain just now. By uh, looking at how to represent uh, polymaps graphically. So the idea is that we will represent, will, uh, represent our, our uh, string diagrams that goes from left to right. And a polymap will be represented by a box that takes some inputs, so their gamma, and split out some outputs, so delta, so delta one, delta two, and A. And then we will represent composition by uh, plugging uh, the wire from one output of F into one input of G. So we can see that, that composition happens only along one wire, one object. <coughs> and so the planarity condition, which is also known as the no crossing condition, state that wires should not cross. And so in particular, it will, so uh, what it will exactly mean is that either this list or this list is empty, and either this list or this list is empty. Finally, the intention law say that taking uh, polymap H, and if I want to compose it with two polymaps F and G along two different inputs of H, then it shouldn't matter in which order I'm doing it. So I can start by plugging F and then G or the other way around. And of course, there is something similar for outputs. Finally, I want to give you some examples that will be important in this talk. First, there is a terminal polycategory. It has only one object and one polymap for each arity. So given two arities M and N, there is a polymap that goes from M copy of star into N copy of star. So this terminal polycategory is trivial. It's not really uh, hard to define but it will be really important in the theory. Then given a linearly distributive category uh, as introduced by uh, Colquette and Silly, or if you prefer a star autonomous category, which is a special case of linearly distributive category, you can define a polycategory where the polymap goes from the tensor product of the input into the par of the outputs. And in particular, any monodal category can be considered as a linearly distributive category where tensor product and par are taken to be both to coincide. And for star autonomous category, it will give the notion of compact closed category. And in this case, of course, we get a poly category where the polymap are given by the, the map that goes from the tensor product of the input into the tensor product of the output. So just for, uh, for information and I'm just recalling the second calculus rules for multiplicative linear logic. If you're not really familiar with it, uh, I invite you to pause the video. And using that, we'll define in a polycategory what is a tensor object. So a tensor object will be taken to be an object that comes with a binary map that goes from A, B into A tensor B. So you can think uh, of uh, vector spaces here. And so the bilinear map that goes from two vector spaces into that answer product. And so it should have a universal property, but say that any map that has A, B in the input should factor uniquely through this, a, through this uh, M, through this billionaire map. So this is a property in vector space that uh, turns up projects linearize billionaire maps. 
And we chose this notation because, because this is closely related still to uh, the, the rules from, uh, from the second calculus. So this uh, corresponds to the tensor left rule. So given something that has A and B in the input, I get something that has A tensor, uh, tensor B in the input. And this M is closely related to uh, the right rule for the tensor product. We get it by uh, looking at the right rule and uh, taking the special case uh, where we have identities. And so by an identity from A, by an identity on A and an identity on B, I should get this map that goes into A tensor B. And this will induce a natural isomorphism that goes between a, B, A, and uh, between maps that goes from A, B and map polymer that goes from A tensor B. So in one direction, we, uh, we get this uh, isomorphism by uh, composing <coughs> by composing with them, and then the other direction by factorizing. So this natural uh, isomorphism is represented by this uh, correspondence between these two maps. We have something similar for the power. That's where we exchange the notion of input and output. So we'd get a co-binary map, a map that goes out of the power into AB, that has a factorization property where this binary map is now post-compose. So everything factors through the post-composition by W. And natural isomorphism where now we have ABs in the output and a, that gave a power B in the output. Finally, we can define the star in a way that is really similar to the way that uh, it's defined in compact flux category by saying that we want two maps that we will call the cup and the cap that has this, um, uh, this typing. So the cup goes from the empty list into A, A star, and the cup goes from A star A into the empty list. So that they satisfied what is called the snake identity. So it's called a set snake identity because if you um, draw it, well, you will get a snake like that. And uh, taking the snake identities is yanking the snake and uh, so taking the snake and making it an identity so we'll have both uh, snake identities and this will induce a natural isomorphism between a map with a in the input and map with a star in the output so using all this notion uh, we get uh, the notion uh, the notion of representable star polycategory that uh, that has been uh, defined by your uh, coquette and Sealy. And by saying that it is a polycategory that has all tensor, par, left and right duals. So now that we introduce that, we want to give a slightly different definition that, uh, that use the notion of universality. So the idea is to get one notion or two notion of universal and universal that encompass all of uh, the properties of the connective. So we'll say that a map is universal in one of its inputs, sorry, inputs or one of its outputs, if it has this kind of uh, factorization property. So for example, U is universal if in this output, if any H that has the right kind of typing that will make it a potential composition with U will be indeed a composite. So there will be a unique way to factor H through H, yeah, for you, sorry. And the other way around for inputs. So it's a same kind of factorization property, but now post-composing by N, by the universal map. And so in particular, for there, if we uh, take U to be the binary map that goes from the tensor, from, the, um, from A and B into the tensor product, then this will be exactly the, the property of, uh, the universal property of the tensor project. It will say if I have A, B in the input of a map, then I can factor it to get a map that has A tensor B in the input. Using that, we say that a polycategory is star representable. If it has all universal objects, what we mean by that is that if you give me some object, some list of objects, that will specify all the input and output of a map except from one. So we, we leave one input uh, empty. Then I can give you this input and a polymap that is universal in A. And of course, the same for outputs. So if everything is specified for, for, the, the, for the polymap, 
except from one input, I can find this output in a universal way. So such that it comes with a universal map. And if a polycategory is star representable, we prove that it is equivalent to uh, the polycategory be, being representable star polycategory. So it's equivalent to, to be star representable and to have all tensor pars and uh, duals. To do that, one way is um, uh, mostly uh, by definition. So we get by definition that the tensor and the par are universal objects. So we, we get them from star representability. What is maybe uh, a little um, more surprising is that we can also get duals by the same uh, kind of, the same scheme of universal property. So we get, for example, that the dual, the red dual, can be defined as an arch universal object with respect to a cup map. And the universal cup, uh, property of this cup map will let us define what is a cup, and it will have uh, built in the fact that it is a snake identity. But we could choose the other way around and say, okay, we will define duals by the in universal property of the cup, and using this in universal property, we can derive a cup that will have the snake, uh, the snake equation. Also, it, uh, we, we should note that uh, cup and cup are also universal in A, and we can use this fact, for example, to prove that the B dual is equivalent to the object uh, that we started with. And the other way, if you give me representable star polycategory, so something that has all tensor paths and duals, I can build uh, star, I can prove that it is a star representable category, so I can build any universal polymap. And how does this work? This works by, so if you give me the typing of the map except from one object, I want to derive this object and uh, our universal map polymap in this. So the way that we do that is that we use a cup to take all the outputs and put them into inputs by starring them. And then we take all the inputs and we tensor them to get a final object. And so this object will come with this out universal polymer. We can do something similar for in universal by flipping, so exchanging input and outputs and replacing all the tensor by paths. And so the cup will be flipped and we give cap instead. So this gives us a, a first. Uh, contribution, which was to give uh, an alternative definition of what it means for polycategories uh, to be representable. And now we can go and define bifibration of polycategories. So first, some terminology. We'll say that, that uh, we will call the functor of polycategory a polyrefinement system. Uh, this terminology is inspired by, by the study of a type refinement system as functor of category. And so we will draw them graphically in, <coughs> so in this way, vertically, where the diagram on the top uh, will be in the, in the domain and the diagram on the bottom will be in the pre-domain. And in such a way that things that lie over another one are sent to it by the polyrefinement system. So for example, R is sent into A, phi is sent into F. And so this precise uh, diagram is expressing the preservation of composition because it says that a composite is sent into a composite. With this graphical uh, representation, we can give a concise definition of Cartesian polymap. So of both in and out Cartesian polymap, which correspond to, um, so for the in it corresponds to Cartesian map and the out correspond to up Cartesian map. And so they are defined, for example, for out Cartesian in this way, by saying that phi is out Cartesian in this output, so it's still parameterized by one, one specific output. If any, uh, any map that lies over a composition by the image of f will factor through f. So if it's lie over a composition, then it's a composition, basically. And the same is true for in Cartesian with respect to one specific input. So if something lies over a composition by the image of this input, so along the image of this input, 
then it will be a composition along this input. So something that is interesting here and that I will come back to later, but uh, I, I want to uh, explain it graphically it's, uh, and to give you some sense of why it works, is that if I take the base category, the base pre-category to be terminal, the terminal pre-category, then all these conditions will be trivial. So everything will be trivialized on, on the base and we can just forget about the base. And we see that this, uh, this uh, factorization property then becomes just uh, the factorization property of universal map. So this explains why your polycategory that is bifurcated over one is the same thing as a star representable polycategory, because then Cartesianness corresponds to universality. And in the similar vein, if the bottom diagram is a universal diagram, then the top diagram will be universal. And so we can think of Cartesian morphism to be a way to lift universality, so universal map from the bottom polycategory into the top polycategory. Talking of lifting, we call a Cartesian lifting any map uh, obtained like that. So given a polymap in the base, and if I have the typing of every, so if I have a refinement, if I have an object over every object of the domain and codomain of F except from one, I should be able to find one object over A in such a way that it comes with a Cartesian polymap that lies over F. And so this object uh, that lies over A we call the pullback of sigma along F in context pi one and pi two, we often just refer to it as a pullback. And the map will be called the Cartesian lifting of F. There is something of course similar for output and we call the, the dual notion of a pullback a push forward. We will also uh, talk about Cartesian lifting. And so finally, a poly refinement system is called a pull vibration or just a vibration if it has all in Cartesian lifting. It will be called a push vibration or up vibration if it has all out Cartesian lifting and a by vibration if both are true. So if it has all Cartesian lifting. And as, uh, as I uh, said before, a category, a polycategory that is by fiber over one corresponds to star representable polycategory. And this is just because um, the notion of Cartesian map will be parameterized by uh, some base polymap that is trivial. And so this will correspond to universal map. And in color, uh, as a co corollary, we get that uh, star autonomous are just uh, represented by polycategories fibered over the terminal polycategory. We can use this uh, to lift the star autonomous structure. So as I said, if you take the Cartesian lifting of a universal polymap, you get a universal polymap. So Cartesian S is a way to lift universality, universal polymap. And so using this fact, if I have a polyrefinement system between a base category that is star representable, so it will, it will have all universal map, and in such a way that this polyrefinement system has all Cartesian lifting of universal polymap, then the top category will be star representable. And so this is a way to lift star autonomous structure because we will list, lift all the connective by just taking the, the Cartesian lifting. And so we can use that on uh, the, the example that I mentioned uh, before of Banner spaces. So first we can define the polycategory of finite dimensional vector spaces by just using the fact that the category of finite dimensional vector spaces is compact close. So we get polylinear maps in uh, the polycategory that are defined by map that goes from the tensor into the tensor. And then we can define a polycategory of uh, finite dimensional banner spaces and contractive polylinear map just by defining what it means to be contractive for a polylinear map. And so this means this, that this equation holds that for any object A1 through AM in A1 through AM and any linear form phi one through phi n that goes from any b's into uh, the uh, sorry into the the field into our base field. Uh, if you want to to think of it, uh, 
object of the jewels of the bees. Then when I plug the in input into F and I take, so this will give me a, a, an output that is in the tensor product of all the bees. Then I can uh, take this output and give it to the tensor product of all the linear form. This will give me a scalar. And if this scalar is lesser, uh, is lesser or equal or as, uh, as an, uh, an absolute value that is lesser or equal to the product of the norms of the A's and phi's, then we will call it contractive. And so in particular, if you take F to be a linear map, then this notion will be a contractive. Um, so will be the fact that F is of, is of norm lesser than one. So something to notice and that is really important is that we can define this polycategory without mentioning any notion of tensor product in a uh, banner spaces. So we have a tensor product in vector spaces, but we don't know how to uh, lift it into banner spaces. And the notion of contractive uh, polylinear map is, I think, something that is easy to define, especially if you compare it to uh, the notion of tensor product in banner spaces. So from that, we get a forgetful functor. that just forget about the norm. And this forgetful functor won't be a bifurcation in general, but it will have all Cartesian lifting of universal polymath. And we saw that it is enough to, uh, to lift the star representable structure. So this will give us a star representable structure on F ban one. And we will get, for example, that the tensor product in F ban one will be uh, the, the push forward along the binary map in F vect. So a map that goes from AB into A tensor B. So we take the push forward and this will give us the tensor product. And in the other way around, the power will be defined as a pullback along the co-binary map that goes from uh, A tensor B into AB. And if you look, so it's explained in more detail in the paper, but if you look at what are uh, pullbacks and push forward in, uh, in this category uh, for relatively to this functor when they exist, this gives you that the tensor product is a projective cross norm and the power is the injective cross norm. So as I said, I find it really exciting because it's hard to see when you look at this norm that they are indeed the right norm for the tensor and the power, that this thing uh, puts a startlemost structure on F ban. But they have this uh, universal property. They have this property of being extremal among all the good norms that you can put on the tensor project. And this reflects exactly the fact that this forgetful that they are defined by a pull push forward and a pullback. And so this gives us a way to find the startlemost structure on um, finite dimensional banner spaces by a universal property and just by defining the notion of contractive polymap. Okay, and so to conclude, in this talk, I presented to you a fiber channel perspective on models of uh, classical multiplicative linear logic uh, by, uh, by showing to you that start and category uh, correspond to poly categories that are bifibered over one. And using uh, this perspective, I show, to, I, sh I show to you how to lift the start and structure along a functor. Uh, if you have a good notion of polymap on your top category, and your functor has enough, uh, uh, enough fibrational property, has enough Cartesian product, like, sorry, Cartesian polymap. Something that we also discussed in the paper and that I don't have uh, enough time to go into is a bunch of polycategorical Grofendi correspondences. And so in particular, a Grofendi correspondence between bifibration of polycategories and pseudo functor into the two polycategory of multivariable adjunction. And using that, so if you specialize this fact uh, to the base polycategory being the terminal polycategory, so we know that bifibration over the terminal polycategory are the same thing as star terminus category. Using the Grofendi uh, correspondence, uh, so we can get a pseudo functor. So this will be equivalent to a pseudo functor that goes from the terminal polycategory into the two polycategory of multivariable adjunction which is the same thing. So a pseudo functor out of the terminal polycategory is the same thing as a Frobenius pseudomonoid. And so we get that Stoutenmus category and Frobenius pseudomonoid are in correspondence. 
And this is something that has been uh, uh, proved and uh, observed by uh, Schulman recently. So some future work that uh, we'll be interested in is first finding other interesting examples of polycategories of bifibration, then using polycategories of bifibration to uh, build polarized model for linear logic. And finally, we will be interested in uh, looking more precisely specifically at the case where the base polycategory is compact closed, which is, for example, the case, uh, uh, true for vector spaces. And so thanks for listening to this talk. If you have any question, you can uh, contact us on the Slack channel uh, during the conference. And uh, feel free to uh, go on my website and uh, check the paper and uh, also check this, uh, this slide if you want to. I will uh, leave you with this uh, nice uh, table that recap all the models of classical multiplicative linear logic that we talk about in this talk. So first, start and most category were connective or represented by monodal structure. Then representable polycategory where they are represented by universal objects. By forward polycategory over one where they are represented by push forward and pullbacks. And finally, for benefit monoid in uh, the two polycategory of multivariable adjunction, where you get the connective by multiplication and commultiplication. Thank you.